All right, what's going on, everybody? Hey, we got something pretty awesome that we're getting ready to do today. We're getting ready to go get up with Booker. We haven't seen Booker in about two weeks now, and it's been two different times that we've got the opportunity to, to feature him. Again, it is my hope to be able to help Booker get his own YouTube channel because this man has the type of a life and just constant stuff going on that I think would make for interesting content and also maybe motivate people to want to try to get their own type of businesses jumping because this guy's got a ton of businesses jumping. We're getting ready to go meet with him at one of the properties that he has. He's doing some work over at one of these properties and it was just this past week that I really wished I would have had the opportunity to get up with him. I didn't find out about this till after the fact, but he just had something really crazy happen at one of his properties where he had to, you know, basically get rid of some folks who were just up to no good at one of these houses that he has so maybe we can get him to talk a little bit about that but more importantly let's see what he's got going on because i think what he's doing is either some renovations or some upgrades at a property trying to make sure that he's got rooms to rent for people who need them so we got joel filming let's see what we can make happen so we're just getting over to the house where booker's at and booker's actually over here doing a bunch of work and what amazes me about this is the fact that you know, this is this is El Padroni right here. This guy's the boss. But to see him out here getting his hands dirty and, you know, being out here trying to do the work at his own places, being able to do the work at his own places, I think that that's a pretty interesting thing. Booker. Hey, hey. What's going on with you, man? man? How you hey. doing? What I had here was a um, four-bedroom four bedroom house, and I was renting rooms out to four different people. Unfortunately, they tore the house up. Uh, roaches and insects i mean all types of things were going on here so i put everyone out so i decided to try something new and make a studio efficiency out of each room which i narrowed it down to three now but i'll show you what i'm working on right now um this was somebody's bedroom i opened it up and took half of another bedroom and if you come this way you're gonna see Kind of like, uh, this is half of, the, of another person's room. I'm gonna put a little refrigerator, stove here. And if you look back this way, I added a shower and toilet. So they'll have their small kitchen area, shower, toilet, bedroom, flat screen TV. This was another room that I opened up. And this room is gonna have a shower, toilet, bed area in here where we at. And behind you is a kitchen. It was the original kitchen, so I'm giving that to this room and I'm gutting out all this stuff so they can have a full kitchen. How long have you been working on transforming this property? About two weeks now. You know, you mentioned that the problems and trying to limit the problems. What do you hope to be able to limit in terms of problems by turning this into three efficiencies? Well, I'm hoping to have less traffic. You know, rent to one person and, you know, you don't have people sharing things, not cleaning up behind themselves, which cause health hazard. So now that each person have their own stuff, you don't have to share anything. It's kind of like, you know, a hotel with a little bit extra in it. Yeah, I mean, because so, they're going to have their own bathroom, their own, bathroom, their own, own kitchen, kitchen, own personal space. This is something new, so I'm going to see how it works. And if it works out good, I may just evolve the rest of them. With the amount of rooms that you have and you're transforming this, trying to limit problems, I hate to hone in on problems, but it's obviously something that you deal with. Right. You had an issue that you had to deal with last week, as a matter of fact. Correct. I observed uh, one of my tenants' girlfriend chopping up coke, just chopping it up. The house where the man, uh, we call the ambulance. You say you need medical attention? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm trying to get my car and stuff. You ain't worried about your car, I'm worried about your health right now. So I kicked them out on the spot, which I know it wasn't right, but I just can't have that type of stuff going on. I told them they had to go or go to jail. Just chopping up cocaine right there. You know? And you know, you had mentioned before, like, um, you know that people are going to have their issues. Right. But I mean, to see it right there in front of your face, I mean, what else are you going to do? Because that's something that could fall yeah. back on you. Right. You don't need those type of problems. Yeah, imagine coming to collect rent. I'm a bondsman. I got an undercover working for me too as well. And we picking up rent. This guy doing drug transaction and get caught in a sting or something that where they think I'm picking up drugs or something like that. So that's definitely a no-no. So, you know, if you're doing drugs, you gotta go. I mean, well, if you're, you're, you're selling drugs, I can't, you know, if you're doing drugs, it's one thing, but if you're selling drugs out the house, dope and stuff out the house, you, you can't live in my property. 
And I, I guess that was the point that I was really trying to make with this was, you know, you had mentioned before that you know that people are going to struggle. Right. And it's not for you to, well, I guess the, the point that you were making, maybe the way that I perceived it was, you know, if you don't see it, hey, you right. know, you know, you probably got an idea that certain things are going to happen. Correct. You can't control everything. But if you see it, yep. you absolutely have gotta to. Go, gotta go. If I see it, you know, I can't control what you do. But, you know, if you're selling drugs out my house and I got somebody witnessing and I seen it with my own eyes, you, you have to leave immediately. I don't want no parts of it. You know, I'd asked you the first day that I got with you, Booker, on a weekly basis, I know that you've got to deal with mm -hmm. just one thing after another and just sharing the few things that you've shared with us about what's been going on recently, it seems like that to a certain degree. You know, how, how do you, Let how do you not go? Bill Bonds, can I help you? Hello? Bill Bonds, can I help you? Yeah, I'm trying to get a bond, my homeboy find it out. Did anybody already call you information? Say again? Did anybody already call you information? Um, no, what city is he in? Portsmouth. Portsmouth, how much is the bond? Uh, 2000. Okay, and are you co-signing for him? Yeah. Alright, where you work at? Um, I own eight. 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 Okay, and uh, you do know when you co-sign, if he misses court, you're responsible for two thousand and any fees I am incurred. Yeah, I ain't worried about all that. Yeah. I am. <laughs> I'm worried about it. Oh no, no, I ain't going to court, man. I'm not. Nah, I'm gonna put my name on it. Nobody. Right, but you do understand if he missed, and when I call you and say he missed, it's like yeah, I'm going to get him. You going to get him? Yeah, he ain't gonna be missing. All right, I'm just, I just, we gotta establish this. If I call you and he missed, you're gonna owe money right then. You know that, right? I'm not worried about this problem, Mr. Booker. All right, brother. Well, um, what you, all right, he's in Portsmouth. Uh, make sure you have his social. Make sure you have his date of birth. Uh, make sure you have proof of, you know, you got you got your own company. And I can meet you down there in about, uh, what, 10, about 11, 15. What proof of, what, what do you need to bring from the company? Well, you say you got your own company. Can you provide proof that you got your own company? Hold on. All right. Okay. Got to make sure stuff solid. <laughs> and I'm sure you deal with that just as yeah. much. Yeah. Because people, oh yeah, I got him. I got no. Do you understand? It's a financial obligation behind it. You know, when I call you, it's a financial obligation that need to be paid. It's you know, no, you go get him. No, you owe me money. <laughs> Oh, well, this was the house that we went to. Yeah. How crazy is that? So, that is even more interesting now. Yeah. So, I just realized where we are. We're at a house that we actually went to with Booker the first time that we filmed with them. And, Joel, show this room right here that he literally just had to break the damn door down to get into. You guys will remember we looked at this room right here. This was a room that he had for rent. Okay, here's a vacant room. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's up, Ruby? What's up? I noticed your rent wasn't in the box. Yeah, my dad's paying it for me. He was going to pay it on Tuesday. Okay. You know, I remember there was a guy that was staying in that room right there, as a matter of fact, one of the rooms that you converted. Yeah. Talking about his dad was going to pay the rent. Yep, never happened. Boss, can I help you? Hey, yeah, um, I was wondering, uh, where do I have to come to pay you to uh, bond somebody out? Bond someone out? Um, which jail are they in? Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know where Virginia Beach Courthouse is at? Yeah. Alright, how much is the bond? 150. 150. What's the charge? Uh, scheduled 1 slash 2 possession. Okay. Mm -hmm. Resist arrest or obstruction to justice threat or force 18. Point two dash four six B. And his bond is fifteen hundred. No, one hundred fifty dollars. Which is fifteen hundred. Ten percent is one hundred fifty, right? Huh? His bond it isn't one hundred and fifty dollars. It's fifteen hundred. Oh, I don't know. He I don't know. He called me. He just called me from jail. He told me when the court today, so he said his bond was one fifty. So I must be okay. Oh yeah, you're right. So let me ask you a couple of questions. Are you co-signing for him? What does that mean, like? All right. When when you co-sign for a person, that means you're responsible to pay the fifteen hundred if he misses court. So you know you're like married. Yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So where you work I'm at? Making sure that's what that meant. Where you work at? Well, where? Uh huh. DoorDash. 
Um, I'm gonna need you to have to find a, another person to co-sign, someone that, you know, that has a, you know, your door, is that all you do full time? Yeah, but I make like 700 a week, I chill my door down. Okay, I'm gonna transfer you to someone to help you. Hold on one second. I never heard anyone making seven hundred dollars a week on DoorDash. They killing it, ain't they? <laughs> <laughs> he must yeah. deliver and everything. That didn't sound good. He sound like he was lying. <laughs> so you're telling me that you guys just apprehended somebody that you had bonded out who was on the run? Yes. I got a call about probably about seven o'clock last night. A bounty hunter wanted to know was I available to help him out on a pickup, and um, I told him I could help him. Then all of a sudden he changed his mind. And I guess he had someone to help him. But anyway, we had a girl that we had on the run, and she was hiding in, I guess, someone's house. I guess it was a couple people there. Um, I don't really know the details on how he got her. That's a good feeling, though, yeah, when you pick yeah, up somebody. Yep, yeah, I don't have to pay that bill now, so, you know. Talk to us a little bit about how that part of it works. Okay, well, like, the girl, she was out on bond. How much was her bond? Her bond was, um, I think, 1500 and um, I got a... a, a a failure to appear notice from the court that she had missed court and they gave me a date I had to pay the bond. So, and then I called Dominique, gave him a copy of her uh, forfeiture, her failure to appear, uh, Capius, and I gave him authority to go and apprehend her, so. Dominique is the bounty um, hunter? Yeah, he's one of my bounty hunters, one of like six. And, um... Dominique, what's up, man? What's going on, boss? Hey, hey, so, hey, so tell me what happened yesterday, man. Uh, so the co-signer knew exactly where, well, he didn't know the exact location, but he knew, uh, you know, where she was. He was in contact with her the entire time. He was, like, giving her money and shit. Wow. Oh, yeah, he was feeding her money and all this stuff. She was cheating on him. Wow. He was using him and all that. So, like, it, it, it got pretty deep in the... How messed up she did that, dude. So how many people was in the house? Did you, you didn't need me to come last night? Because I, I was ready. Nah, nah. Um, the only reason I wanted uh, PD there uh -huh. is because her boyfriend has like a bunch of charges and shit like that. Mm. And there was like seven or eight cars out front. Okay. Just take a screenshot of the BLP, send it to my phone, and get with Danielle so she can uh, make the payment for you. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, thanks, Dominique. Yep, no problem. So that's a good feeling right there. Yeah, got one off, got, got one off my mind. He said that he had a few other people that he was looking for for you. Yep. Is he your main guy? Yeah, he's one of them. He's very aggressive. Um, go get her. Go out there and get it. How does he go about trying to find him? Just beating the street, talking to people? No, we, uh, we have a little... Uh, <laughs> kind of like an intelligence app that we have where we can kind of look people up, kind of cheat a little bit, you know. That's crazy. We can find out where your light bill's going. We can find out, you know, That's water crazy. bill. Then we got a little tip, you know, so. A little CI yeah, app. A little bit of. Man, they got, they got something for everything these days. Yep. So $1,500 bond was what was out there that he just went and got for you. He just made 150 bucks. So that's what he gets. He gets yeah. 150 dollars for going out there and doing yeah. that. Yeah, that's what I got. So the bond was 1500. I charged her family 150 bucks. So pretty much the bounty hunter gets everything the bondsman get. So if it was a 10,000 dollar bond, I would have paid him 1,000 dollars. Oh wow. Okay. So that's really interesting to know. Yeah. You had mentioned Danielle. Danielle is. She's my girlfriend. She's she what. <laughs> She's what I need to make this thing work. She does so many things. I asked her to do so many. She's just, she's doing really good things. She's bonding. She's, she runs the barbershop. She runs the ice cream parlor. She does things with the room and houses for me, dealing with, you know, women that I encounter sometimes. So, you know, I'll say, babe, go ahead and deal with this because you know where it's going. So, so she's, a, she's a bondsman as well. Yep, she's a bondsman. Well, you got Bonnie and Clyde right here. You know what? She's, she's, she's awesome, man. She's awesome. Booker, you've given me the, the green light to, to meet with Danielle. She's at the office right now. Yes. Uh, I'm going to get a chance to meet with her and talk a little bit further with her about what you and her have going on, which is you know quite a bit of pretty awesome stuff. Yeah. She got some bounty. Matter of fact, we got some bounty together going on. We did a bounty together. So she'll oh, think about it. Hell yeah. All right. So just got done meeting with Booker and Booker was telling me a pretty interesting story about apprehending one of the fugitives that he's 
had on bond, a person who skipped out on bond and missed court. They just apprehended that person last night, so that's pretty interesting. Right now, I'm gonna get ready to go meet with Booker's girl at the bonding office that we filmed the second video with Booker at and get the opportunity to hopefully film with her, introduce all of you to her. Booker speaks very highly of her as he should, that's his girlfriend. And she's also a bonds person as well. Is it a bondsman, bonds woman? But I know that she's got some really interesting stuff to share. She's looking forward to doing that. I'm looking forward to getting an opportunity to feature her. So let's go meet Booker's girl, Danielle. Booker Bell, Bonds, Danielle speaking, may I help you? Hi, yes, my name is Stacy. I um, called in about 10, 15 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Hi, Stacy. Um, Gerard said he already has someone down there to bond you out. So you should be out soon. Oh, okay. All righty. Okay, thank you. No problem. You have a um, good day. Do you have a phone number for him? I don't know his phone number. No, um, it just, he called from Messenger, so I didn't get a phone number. But oh. he said that he, could, okay. he couldn't come down there, but he has someone down there to bond you. So you should be out shortly. You're welcome. You have a good one. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. I'm not good in front of the camera, Joe. Miss <laughs> Danielle, you're doing amazing. <laughs> so this is our first opportunity getting a chance to actually talk with you on camera. And you're Booker's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You're a bondsman, a bounty hunter, a businesswoman. Tell us about yourself. Well, I'm kind of an extension to Booker. <laughs> whatever he can't get done you know I'll handle it for him whether it's a bond or whether it's with the uh, properties or store or beauty salon ATM it goes on and on whatever he can't get to I'm pretty much the, the go-to person kind of help him out you know you guys have your hands in quite a bit of business endeavors and different things that you guys are doing it sounds like you guys basically work 24-7. It sounds about right. It sounds about right. Um, sometimes I have to tell them, let's step away from the business. Or At first, the office was in the house, and I was just like, this is way too much. <laughs> we need to get away from the house and have our business time and then our home life. So it's kind of hard balancing it because... You get calls all night for bonding. You get calls all night for the properties. So we're pretty much working around the clock. <laughs> do you enjoy it? I do. I, I love helping people. So however I can help, that's what I want to do. I want to be a blessing. So if it's getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning to get someone loved one out of jail, I'm all for it. So that's pretty much how we balance everything. If he can't get to it, I get to it vice versa all right so i'm up here at booker's office and we're being kind of quiet because booker's girlfriend's in the office on the phone right now actually talking with another person who's looking for a bond but what's interesting is when i got up here the bounty hunter who apprehended the person who was on the run yesterday was up here to get paid an individual by the name of dominique who i'm getting ready to introduce you guys to what's going on uh, Mr. Dominique. Yes, sir. So tell us a little bit about yourself. You're, you're a bounty hunter? Uh, yeah. So I'm a fugitive recovery agent uh, licensed in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, I'm also a private investigator. Um, I do some other side work and uh, I just graduated K-9 Training Academy. So Congratulations. Thank you. I'm uh, trying to find a way I can help the world and apply my skills. But. You're also retired military. Correct. When I first met with you inside, you said uh, that you really like what you do because you're helping society out, basically. Exactly. Um, the police, they have a lot going on, um, regardless of taking sides of whatever situation's going on at the moment. Uh, they're not able to go after everybody who needs to be in the system. Um, so that's why we have bail and bail agents to uh, go out there and help take care of what the police officers can't at the moment. I had heard from Booker, I've heard from you uh, talking with you about how this situation went last night with this fugitive 
and you said that this was a relatively no drama situation, just a pretty easy thing. You've done over 90 apprehensions, so I'm sure that you've seen the full gamut of, you know, craziness. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of crazy people out here. Um, there's people who are misunderstood, and there's people going through situations. Everybody's going through a different point in their life and jail can amplify that tenfold. But last night was definitely um, on the easier side. What's also very interesting about this is the fact that you guys actually have a video of this apprehension where basically when you guys showed up, it was kind of almost lucky that when you showed up, uh, the woman in question was actually just coming out of the house. Exactly. Uh, it, it doesn't always happen like that, but Again, luck comes into play, and uh, we were at the right place. Uh, we used the right information and techniques in order to figure out where she was down to about 10 meters. And she needed to smoke a cigarette, and we happened to be there. So, lucked out for us. Hey, come here, please. Let me see your hands. Come here. Don't move. I'm good. Can I put pants on at least? Yeah, we'll get you some pants. Just me? No, there's more than one person. It's just me in there. All right. Well, come here. Do me a favor. Walk through here. It's just a family. That's all. All right. Well, do me a favor. Walk through here so the dog doesn't get out. I want to tell them what's going on. It's just my... There's nobody else. All right, it's just look. a family. I know I'm being arrested. Yeah. All right. Give me your key. But, you, know. you got a handcuff key. Yeah. Oh, my bond. I already know. Yep. It's nobody. It doesn't matter who's in there. I'm going to switch you. After that cigarette, I'm going to switch it behind you, okay? Okay, go ahead. Do you have anything on your person? No. No needles? No nothing? I don't do drugs anymore. So okay. No. All right. No, you can finish smoking that cigarette. Go ahead and sit on the car. I'm ready to go. Yeah, let's We're going. Go. All right, let's go. Can I get some pants real quick from somebody? Nope, we'll get you some yeah, pants. You can get pants. Thank you. Okay. We're going in with you. Who's in there? Yeah. Um, Never mind. Let's just go. All right, let's go. Oh, the girl. Yes. He knows exactly where she is. I know it'll be an easy pickup for y'all. Okay, and it's still in the state, though. It's still in the state. It's still in the state. It's like an hour. It's an hour drive, but. He knows exactly where this young lady is. But we ain't get no money yet. Did you get any money? He's going to like Richmond? He's going to pay something today. He's like up towards Richmond? Yes. Okay. Up towards Richmond. He knows the exact location as, as to where she is. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be an easy pickup. Um, she's on drugs. Uh, so she's in and out the house, he said. He's been watching her because, of course, he, he has to pay all his money. So he figured she ain't going to be out in the street. And he's um, paying all his money. And she's free from jail. Well, I say we go once we get a first payment. Well, he's gonna pay today, so. All right, so we can do that tomorrow or tonight. Yeah, I think y'all should do that tonight. That way y'all okay. have a pick up for, mm. it's a definitely, a definite hit. Mm -hmm. I can do All it. Right. That'll be two. Let <laughs> oh, me knock them down. We got, we got a list over here. <laughs> we got a list. <laughs> but we knocking them down. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> what, 12, 13? Well, Somebody here. Hey, 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 watch out. Damn, fine. Yeah, where's Lisa? Nah, where's... She's over on Tom's Cove. Yeah. 